So this one, we are going to render some very soft, fuzzy material. Um, the, you know, the ball of yarn, I'm going to go for some of it. I'm going to kind of gesture at the initial tone that I see, um, get the idea of the shape, and then I'm going to slowly build up some of this really soft, soft texture, right? So something like this can also be applied to hair, but one of the biggest things about rendering, you know, something that's piled up like this or, you know, something that grows, right, so like hair or fibers or anything like that, it's all about the direction in which you kind of create those, those cross contour lines, right, so I'm going to go pretty dark at first, I just need to get some tone on my page in all honesty, because, you know, working in that like semi-reductive additive technique for me is a lot easier, if you don't have, you know, charcoal or very soft materials at home and you don't really have the option, to set your page up like this from the get-go. Building up with pencil is never a problem, right? You're gonna, you guys are gonna see me do both today, working with, you know, charcoal, compressed charcoal and some, you know, graphite pencils. All of it's on the table, right? You can kind of go this mixed media route, but just know that, you know, pencils, they do take a little bit more time, right? And that's never a bad thing, but you just have to have a little bit more patience, right? So I'm going to kind of gesture at some of this initial kind of line work. So, you know, I could use the very small point to my little piece of vine charcoal here, or I could break it <laughs> and kind of, you know, work the width and kind of play around with some of those interlooping lines, right? So for those that are like, why would I ever draw a whole ball of yarn like this? Like, what are you thinking? You know, it's the general idea. You can kind of make up some of the lines as you go along, and it's all about the essence, right? So it's almost like, you know, rendering meets scribble town, which is fun, right? You're kind of getting the essence of. So something about the vine charcoal that's really good for soft materials is that it is a very soft kind of appearance by nature. I know I have some rough textures, but it can smooth out really easily. And so you can kind of get that sense of overlapping soft things without having to focus too much on some of like the detail that you see, right? So something like charcoal is really kind of made for soft things. And then I can kind of go back in. I have one little loop here and then work that in individually, right? And start building up some more of that kind of like rope-esque yet soft texture, right? So it's all about that push and pull one thing too to look for are some of those shapes right so i have a lot of very like deep shadow shapes so looking for those like negative spaces within the positive form right so i have you know this kind of gap where i'm like i don't see a lot of texture or you know it's getting really hard and muddled so you can look for some of those negative space shapes and it'll kind of start to help you get that push and pull of some of the actual lines that you can see right so as promised I'm gonna kind of work with some of my graphite on top of this so I'm gonna draw a strand that I see which is like right here and it kind of loops back to the background I might kind of tangent this with some of the compressed charcoal right because graphite can only get but so dark but all of the hair direction really kind of flows along this general shape right so it's one of those things you have to decide for yourself how much detail is too much detail, right? So I'm going to kind of loop a little bit, right? Because these are not flat shapes. They kind of pill out a little bit more, right? Almost like, you know, it's not a perfect contour. There's lumps and bumps all the way around, right? So you have to pick and choose how much you want to render. Right? Kind of working in some of the ones that are closest to you is probably a good idea, right? So remember when we talk about depth, and creating that illusion of depth, it's the things that are closer to you are usually in stronger contrast, greater detail, and the things that are further away from you that you don't either want to draw or you can't see as much detail, you don't render it, right? So that's going to help push the spatial depth of your piece, but it's also going to help just push, you know, visual interest. It's going to be more appealing if you have some things intensely rendered and some things kind of left a little bit more to the imagination. Right, so I'm going to kind of work some of this hair along, right, and I'm going to pull some of this tone back, right, just so you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Got a little too heavy handed with the charcoal, I know we're all surprised. Alright, so I'm going to kind of, you know, am I going to do every hair? Uh, no. But I'm going to kind of slowly start to pull 
some of these little fibers out, right? So I'm gonna deepen that shadow so you guys can see a little bit more about what I'm doing. All right, so I'm slowly pulling these little fibers out, right? And so they have these kind of like little pits of shadow, right? And they kind of all stem from the same place. I'm gonna work some highlights back into, but what I'm essentially doing, I'll kind of do this off to the side, do a larger scale version of one is like two connecting pieces of my yarn. I'm essentially kind of going in slowly and picking and choosing, you know, value tones for some of these fibrous materials and really kind of building up that tone very, very slowly, right? And so it's going to come from both ends and they all kind of meet in the middle, right? And so it's all when it comes to, you know, hair texture, really soft things that have a lot of fiber, it requires a lot of patience. But it also just, you know, it's layers upon layers of value and tone and line work, right? You're not going to get it all done in one go. And if you do, then it's not a texture you wanted to render in the first place, right? And so, you know, there's different ways to summarize and that's all fine and good. But if you are really trying to practice rendering some of those more like linear or fibrous textures and still wanting them to be soft, slow and tedious and patient is the way to go, right? So you know don't get frustrated but you guys can see that there's also like a lot of cross contour work when it comes to these right so uh, graphite so reflective right you're really building up that tone slowly um something else i could do too just to kind of help soften obviously i can kind of smear this along with my finger right or a blending stick something that looks like this right and kind of really push down and really soften up that tone might just do this so you guys can see a little bit easier large scale so working with my graphite starting to build up some of those darker fibers also gonna put some in the middle right it's a nice sound effect for anyone that has a roommate that might be getting on their nerves you should do this when they're there just kidding So I'm going to use my blending stick and just kind of smooth out some of that graphite, which already, even that like soft, continuous tone, there's a reason we don't usually refer to that kind of tone where it's like completely continuous as soft, right? Because it, it lends itself well to this. But now I can go in and I can be like, okay, maybe there are some stray, some stray hairs like here and there. Maybe I do want to build this pit up. And so again, this is my 8B pencil. It's a pretty dark pencil. Graphite only gets so dark, so my expectation is not that it's going to get as dark or richly black as like my compressed charcoal. So I'm not going to get frustrated with that. You're just going to kind of live with, you know, the bounds of the material. But I am going to kind of really deepen this part. And so maybe I am going to pull in just a little bit of my vine charcoal here. Nothing too crazy, but just to kind of really help soften that connection of where like the two fibers go. And then I can like continue on with my like line work. And of course, there's always the option if you feel like there's a highlight more towards the middle. You guys can use your eraser, your kneaded eraser, your you know, rubber eraser like the one that's in my hand, and kind of pull some of those highlights back in. Right, so you're starting to get that appearance of something that's not only soft, but also woven, right? So you can, of course, do the same thing with like compressed charcoal or vine charcoal. I'm just gonna get my general tone down here. Where's my shiny? Here he is. Really soft, just out of the gate. I love these things. But then I can slowly build up when I find my charcoal the second piece I lost so far. Just really start very slowly kind of pulling some individual strands in. And remember you have your sandpaper block, right? If you really do want to get that flat, very pointy edge, you just have to sand down some of your charcoal and you can get that like nice little point and make some more very delicate line work. It's an option. And 
smooth that out a little bit. And it's all about the change of direction. You guys can see I'm kind of working in this like voluminous way where all of my lines, they're not all going like this. They're kind of working around the shape, right? And kind of coming in. So it looks more like that kind of woven appearance. Oh, a little too far there. And of course you can always pull some of those strands back out with your eraser. Kind of work that way, right? So two different effects of the same thing. Um, I personally like, especially with this one, the graphite a little bit more because I think having that control of a pencil can really lend itself well, but you could always use a charcoal pencil if your vine charcoal is a little too messy or you're just not getting that like really crisp line. Having that charcoal pencil to like work in can help bring that line back out because if I try to use my graphite, you're not really seeing it, right? It just be kind of comes this reflective distraction. So hopefully this was a little helpful on how to render some soft materials and I wish you luck.